So I've always been terrified of making bread and now I feel like I've finally found a recipe that's going to change your life as much as it's changed mine and it's my perfect focaccia. So I'm going to show you how to make that today. Okay, so the most important part of this recipe, believe it or not, for me was learning about the tepid water. So tepid is basically another word for lukewarm. And then we've got a nice little sachet of yeast that goes straight in here. And we're simply just going to be whisking it up. And this is when your yeast starts to activate. So the next most important part of this is actually the flour. I'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon to this and we're just going to whisk it through for like even dis distribution. So now another key point is not to add your salt to the dry mixer now because we don't want the salt to get in contact with the yeast because basically it will kill the yeast. So we're just going to be adding in our flour and cinnamon mixture to the wet ingredients at this stage. And we're going to be adding in the salt now and we're going to just gently fold it through with the spatula. So we literally just want to get it to the point that it's only just combining. We call it a shaggy dough texture. I think you can see what I mean by that. It's got those like, well, it's shaggy. And we're going to add a little bit more water and we're going to be mixing it in a bit. We want to keep very gentle, big movements. We don't want a tight dough. And what we're looking for is this lovely kind of stretchiness. So now that we've got our dough like this, just put this over here and put it in a nice warm place for 20 minutes to double in size. Okay, so our first proof, 20 minutes. So we're going to wet our hands. It just makes working with dough so much easier. Obviously, if you have a scraper, I'm sure you can go down that route, but I'm all about getting stuck in there with your food. So we're just going to go from the sides a bit and just like bring it in and kind of knock it back. So you can see it's still a very nice wet dough. Okay, so that's exactly what we're after. Nice air bubbles. Boop. So now we're going to put it in for its second proof and we're doing to generously oil a bowl. And I'm gonna, whoa, delicious. This is so much fun as well to make. And then we're going to put a towel over it again for another 20 minutes. So while my bread is proving, I'm going to roast some grapes. So I like to roast mine in a little bit of honey. And what's nice about this is that once it caramelizes, it kind of has that like bitter caramel flavor with the sweetness of the grapes, which is really awesome with the savory bread. So these guys just go into a hot oven for maybe 10, 15 minutes, just until they get squishy and delicious. Here's our little beauty. I mean, look at that. I'm gonna have a hello gorgeous. Okay, so now we're just going to basically let the dough roll out onto the surface. All that beautiful oil is going to protect it. Obviously at this stage you don't want to handle it too much because then you're just going to lose those beautiful air bubbles that you worked so much for. And then we're just going to pull and kind of fold over. You can see it's really great because he's keeping the... What should we name him? Joey. <laughs> Joey is keeping his texture and shape but it's also full of that beautiful air. So now we're going to generously oil our pan. So now we're going to gather our beautiful dough and put him to bed. Massive fan of a good olive oil. And then we're just going to gently kind of disperse it evenly. This is going to give you that beautiful crust, the crunchy edges, and that just overall rich dough. So now we get to make our little dimples, I like to call them. I was always so bleep in high school, never had dimples. Just before our last proof, we're going to add a nice little shake of brown sugar. It's 20 minutes, here we go. So, ready to go into the oven. Look at that wobble, I mean, hello, I'm so excited. And now we're gonna add some toppings. I think our grapes are gonna be ready to come out of the oven. I like to roast them beforehand, just so that they're not like super raw when you bite into your delicious focaccia. I kind of like being the food stylist that I am will always leave a stalk or two on just because you know it's just beautiful. Okay nothing like some freshly picked thyme. Like really young and soft and delicious. This is going to look so beautiful. Okay then I'm gonna add another little glug. Like I said it gives it that beautiful crust and crunch and golden deliciousness and then I'm just going to just give it a few more perks to make sure we get that lovely airy effect. Knock it down a little bit. And this beauty is good to go. To die for. It's amazing. Look at that. 
I'm like proud every time I make this and the feeling of joy never leaves. So we've let it cool down a little bit. The reason we baked it in cast iron is because it retains the heat, just really gives it that incredible crust that we're after. So a little trick is to put this plate on the top here and carefully, because it is hot, turn it over in one foul swoop. And hopefully, ah, hurrah, ta-da. <laughs> and now we can just carefully put them back over there. The only thing left to do is slice into it and eat it with your favorite cheeses. Okay, look at that, hey? Squidgy, delicious, fresh. So I love to eat this bread with a nice little bit of gorgonzola, the sweetness from the grapes, the savoriness of the bread. I'm just gonna fight a little bit with the rosemary. <laughs> It loves things like strong cheeses, creamy cheeses, but then you've also got your camembert if you don't like that strength. And then, yeah, here we go. Mm, it's so good. Super airy, super fluffy, it almost just disappears. Now all you need to do is find yourself a shady tree, a glass of chilled vino, or a grape tizer, and enjoy.